Hi friends. Now we can discuss some of the concept of classical economics like classical dichotomy, neutrality of money, money illusion, pigo effect and real balance effects. Classical dichotomy refers to the idea that real and nominal variables are to be analyzed separately. According to classical economists, the changes in the monetary variables do not affect the real variables like output, employment and interest rate. Money is therefore neutral in the sense that it cannot affect the real variables like employment and output. The change in money supply will lead to direct and proportionate change in the price level alone. Okay, now neutrality of money. It implies that a change in the quantity of money will lead to a proportionate change in the absolute price level. While the relative prices and the real variables like output, employment, etc. are unaffected. That is, according to classical economists, the role of money is neutral. Money is just a veil. It acts only as a cover. The change in money supply will lead to changes in the price level alone. It do not affect the real variables like output and employment. Okay. According to classical economists, money is neutral. But according to Keynes, money is not neutral. Similarly, the monetarists like Kaldor considered money is neutral in the lo long run. But in the short run, money is not neutral according to monetarists. Now, the third concept is money illusion. The concept was introduced by Irving Fisher, the American economist. It refers to the a problem faced by those people who considered the face value of money alone without considering the purchasing power of money. The workers subject to money illusion feel better off when their money wages double even though the prices also double because when prices increased and the money wages also increased at the same rate the real value of money remains the same. So those person who do not consider the real value of money or those person who consider only the absolute value of money that is the face value of money may subject to the problem of money illusion. They think their uh, income has increased if they do not consider the real value of money. That is the concept of money illusion. Now, Pigo effect. A.C. Pigo explain the effect of fall in prices on demand, consumption, output and employment. It is termed as Pigo effect. Pigo defined wealth as the money supply divided by the current price level. That is the wealth, the real value of wealth. He says that when the prices are falls, when the prices fall, the real value of money increases. Then the people can purchase more. The deflation of prices will lead to increase in demand, more consumption, increase in employment and output. Pigo also explained this as the real balance effect. Pigo effect is also known as real balance effect. Okay. Now, 
when price is false the value of money increases but value of other assets also increases that effect was stated by don pattington as the real balance effect therefore real balance effect is associated with the name of don pattington according to him the impact of changes in the price level on consumption through changes in the real value of money holding is called real balance effect a fall in the prices due to deficiency of demand will increase the real value of money holdings we we know that people invest some of their money in bonds or share markets also therefore when the prices falls the value of money increases similarly value of other holdings money holdings also increases therefore the effects of change in prices on the commodity markets as well as the bond market the uh, impact on share market also to be considered that is stated by don pattington thus pattington's real balance is a broader concept than the pigo effect don pattington explains the impact of change in prices on the demand employment output and the impact on bond market and share market okay now we can discuss the major criticisms on classical macroeconomic theory the great depression of 1930s proved that classical theory has certain shortcomings keynes criticized the classical theory of employment on the following grounds they are number 1 full employment equilibrium is unrealistic according to keynes keynes stated that underemployment equilibrium is a normal state full employment equilibrium is a very rare state in the economy secondly keynes refuted sales law of market which states supply creates its own demand according to keynes demand is more important supply will not may not create its own demand if there is shortage in demand that will lead to employer unemployment and other economic problems so keynes criticized and refuted sales law of market number 3 classical economists believe in the saving investment equality they stated wage price and interest rate flexibility which ensures full employment equilibrium but keynes stated that keynes criticized the classical notion of automatic equality between rate uh, rate of interest uh, automatic equality between saving and investment through rate of interest according to keynes investment is determined by rate of interest and an important determinant is margin, marginal efficiency of capital that is expected return of additional investment mec is a very major important determinant of investment investment becomes worthwhile only if mec greater than a rate of interest now keynes also stated that if wage cut policy is followed by the economy in a macro level that will lead to reduction in aggregate demand if all industries or many industries follows the wage cut policy to maintain full employment equilibrium as stated by the classical economists that will lead to fall in the aggregate demand when aggregate demand falls level of employment and output will 
decline. Then fifth criticism is classical economists believe in the automatic function of an economy. But Keynes advocated state intervention to stabilize the economy from depression and inflation. In order to stabilize the economy, the government has a positive role in the economy, according to John Maynard Keynes. Number six, according to Keynes, speculated motive is also important. Demand for money, according to classical economists, is confined to transaction demand and precautionary demand. People demand money for transaction purpose and for precautionary purposes like unexpected expenditures and for speculative purpose also for making advantage in the change in rate of interest in the future according to Keynes. So Keynes elaborated the demand for money. Seventhly, classical economists believed in long run full employment equilibrium. Keynes believed in short-run economy. Keynes stated that in the long run we may all debt. So Keynesian economics is majorly related to short-run economics. And now I am concluding here. Thank you.